So we're just going to make a short video on winding numbers. I'm just going to define what they are. They're going to be used later a lot. And we need them for the general version of uh, Cauchy's, uh, the Cauchy, Cauchy's theorem, or the, or the Cauchy integral formula. Okay, so definition. So like gamma, so let's be a closed loop. Um, let Z be in the complement of the image in the complex numbers. So we define the winding number or sometimes called the index of gamma around uh, so around Z naught Uh, to be this number. We take this contour integral. Okay, so this is what the, this is the definition of the winding number. So uh, from the definition here, it's it's not clear that it's even an integer. It is actually is going to be an integer valued. So the idea is that if we have some some curve here, gamma, so like so, gamma, um, we could take a bunch of different points. And we could look at the how much it winds around these things. So n gamma z naught, uh, this will be 2. Gamma z1, this will be 1. So that's around this thing. So it only goes once around this guy. And it doesn't go around uh, this guy at all. So it's going to be 0. Um, if we had gone in the opposite direction, we would have gotten a negative integer. So this thing is going to be integer valued. And um, uh, yeah, then it's going to be constant on each of the connected components of, of C not gamma. So like if, here's the whole curve. And if we were to remove the image of this curve, we would have had three components corresponding to each of these three values here. So let's go ahead and prove this. Um, so lemma. So the winding number. the winding number function n gamma and then I'm just gonna put like a little dash there to, to indicate that we're gonna have this this is a placeholder um, it's from points not on the curve to say values has complex numbers so it has values has integer values and it's constant on the connected components of this guy. Okay, so first of all, let's suppose it's integer valued. Okay, if it's integer valued, then this function here is, is you can see that from the definition here, it's gonna be continuous as a function of Z naught here. So as, as long as you don't approach points on the boundary here, this denominator is going to be okay, and you, you see that you have a continuous function. Um, okay, because it's integer valued, it must be locally constant. And so the only way for an in, a continuous integer valued function to change is if it jumps to a connected component. Okay, so that explains why it's going to be integer valued on each connected component. So what we need to show is we need to show that it's, it's actually um, integer valued. So proof. So it's enough to show um, 
it is it, it is integer valued. Okay, so what we'll do is we define uh, g of t. So this is going to be this partial uh, version of this thing. And we'll do gamma prime of tau, gamma of tau minus z naught d tau. So this is what you get when you actually plug in the curve into the function there. Okay, so observe that that g of 1 over 2 pi i. So that would be this full curve here. So this guy here is n of gamma of z naught. Okay, so z naught is again a point in the complement. Um, so we also observe that this guy is zero. Okay, so here's the, the uh, check of this. So let's take the derivative Okay, so the star is just, just this crap here. Okay, or we'll do five-pointed star. Okay, so this is minus g prime of t e to the minus g of t gamma t minus z naught plus e to the minus g of t gamma prime of t. Okay, and so what's g prime of t? So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, it'll just be the integrand there. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to just move it to the next page. So this is, um, uh, so what did we have? So we had minus gamma prime of t, gamma t minus z naught, e to the minus g of t. Then we had gamma t minus z naught over here, plus e to the minus g of t, and then we had a gamma prime of t. Okay, and so notice that these guys here cancel, right? And then we have a positive sign, the signs here, then we'll have something that's the same here, so this thing's equal to zero. Okay, so this, uh, this, is, uh, this is the check here. Okay, so that concludes this little part. <laughs> okay, and so now what can we conclude? This implies that there exists a constant such that e to the minus g of t, uh, gamma of t minus z naught. So this guy is this constant. Okay, and notice that, uh, also note that g of 0, so we have this integral, if I let this go from 0 to 0, that's 0. So uh, e to the minus g of 0, gamma 0 minus z naught is c, which tells us that this thing is 0, right? So this, this tells us that c is equal to gamma 0 minus z naught. Okay, let's put this in. So this tells us that e to the minus g of t, gamma t, minus z naught, this is gamma zero minus z naught. Okay, and this tells us that e to the negative g of one, so this is equal to gamma of one minus z naught, is equal to gamma of one, uh, gamma of zero minus z naught. Okay, so this tells us that e to the minus, okay, and now we have uh, well, let me just put it like this. G of 1 is equal to gamma 0 minus z naught over gamma 1 minus z naught. And this thing's equal to 1 uh, because it's a closed curve. So it's a closed curve, which means that these two endpoints are the same. 
right? And so that's what that's that's what gives us this, and uh, hence we we can solve this equation, and this tells us that minus g of one is equal to two pi i k for some k, which is an integer. But before, what did we have? We had that g of one is this guy, right? So this tells us that g of one over two pi i, which is n gamma of z naught. So before, okay, so negative two pi, uh, negative g of one was, was an integer, right? Well, that means that also, um, uh, you know, g of one is also an integer. Okay, so this tells us that this guy here is an integer, and we're done.